to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen? Let's get ready, Let's get ready to praise and worship Him. Here we go.
Would you raise your hands and sing at the cross? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received. Can we give God a hand clap of praise this morning? Amen. It feels good in the house today. I'm excited that you all are here worshiping with us. Uh, this past week, I was listening to a devotion, and, and one of the things that really stood out to me says that we can't control every circumstance, but what we can control is our perspective. And I was, I, I was, that really stood out to me. And I was thinking about in, in Psalms 23, 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And what I, what I love about that is King David, the, the author of that, though he was a king, he was still a, a human. And so there were situations and circumstances that he couldn't control. But what he could control was with confidence, surely, goodness and mercies will follow me. And, and church, I don't know what you came in here with today, but I want you to know that you can transition your thoughts from what you can't control to what you can't control. And this morning, you can control how you worship, how you approach the presence of God, because the presence of God is here, which means anything can happen. Miracles happen in his presence. Healings happen in his presence. What you need can be found here. We're going to invite our prayer team up this morning. If you want somebody to just partner with you in prayer and help you just shift that focus, we encourage you to come forward here in a moment. If you would, just bow your heads with me. We're going to pray as we transition back into worship. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this day. God, continue to work mighty things throughout this service. God, thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to continue to do. God, I pray that we would transform the way we think and we would change our perspective, that we would no longer look look at what we can't control, but we would look towards you, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord. There is no one like you and there is none beside you. God, we give you all the glory, honor, and worship in this place today. Amen. Let my heart not forget. Let my heart return again to the
sing this. What he's done, oh, what he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. And I praise God for what he's done. Sing it out, sing. And what he's done, what he's done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, and my future is heaven. And I praise God for what he's done. Can you lift your hands and say, what he's done, what he's done. All the glory and the honor, Lord. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is saved. Church, can we think about what God has done and respond accordingly? Heavenly Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory, the honor, the praise. There's none like you, and there is none beside you. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Welcome to Vibrant Church. If I haven't had the chance of meeting you yet, my name is Cole. My wife, Lily, and I have the honor and privilege of serving in Next here at Vibrant. And we just want to say welcome to all of our first-time guests. We're excited that you are here. Vibrant, can we give it up for all of our first-time guests this morning? Yeah. Again, we're, we're just absolutely thrilled that you're here. We'd love to connect with you. And one of the best ways we can do, uh, do that is to have you fill out a connect card. You can find that in the seat back pocket in front of you, or you can go to vibranthtx.com, click the connect tab and fill out the information there. This is a no hassle guarantee. We're not gonna sell your information to anybody. This is just a way that we can ultimately connect with you, hence the name, right? 
but we can answer any questions you may have about Vibrant Church, see how we can be partnering you with in prayer, and then also just help you get connected if you want to do that. If you are new or if you've been coming for a year or you've been coming for three years, but you want to take the next step at Vibrant or you want to hear more about the church, the best thing that you can do is go through next. Next is immediately following first service every Sunday. And in that, you'll hear more about the vision of the church, where we believe God is calling us to go, answer any questions you may have about the church and how we're structured. And also we do a spiritual gifting test so you can help better identify maybe where you can plug in and what ministry would be a great fit for you to join. Also, we're going to transition into a time of giving this morning. And as you prepare to give at Vibrant, there's multiple ways that you can give. You can give in person in the offering buckets. You can text to give at 84321, or you can go to VibrantHTX.com, click the giving tab, and fill out the information there. Lastly, you can give in the Church Center app. If you don't have the Church Center app, we highly recommend you downloading it. It's a great way to stay connected to Vibrant. You can receive push notifications for events that are coming up. Stay connected to your life groups and just all the things that God's doing in and through Vibrant Church. So if you would, we're going to bless this offering. You'll bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to continue to do. God, I pray that you would bless this offering, that you would multiply it, that you would bless every gift and every giver. And God, that every sin of this would go towards building your kingdom, that lives would be changed, not just here locally, but across the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I get the honor and privilege this morning of announcing our Dream Teamer of the Month. Normally, Pastor Ryan and Pastor Crystal are up here, but they are serving in another capacity this morning. And so I got the baton. And by the baton, I mean the mic. So uh, this individual, we, we love them. We're so excited to, to give this to them today. A lot of times we joke that they were the original Dream Team member. So whenever the vision for Vibrant Church was cast, this individual was probably the first person to go, you know what, I'm gonna jump on a team. I'm gonna be involved. I'm gonna make this vision come to reality. And, and, and I would love, if you would, will you stand to your feet this morning? Cause we're gonna give our dream teamer of the month to Pastor Michael Scobie. Pastor Michael, why don't you come on out? We love Pastor Michael. We're thankful for him, for when God gave the vision for him, just running with it and moving his family here. We're just so thankful to be a part of what God is doing here. And, and a lot of that wouldn't happen without Pastor Michael just jumping in on that. And the one thing, because I know that he hates moments like this, but one thing that I will say is one thing that I, Lily and I talk about often is that we love that Pastor Michael is a servant. When, it, when we're working, if it's hot, if it's cold, if it's raining, you can count on Pastor Michael, not just standing inside watching everyone else, but he gets his hands dirty, he's involved. And, and I think that is a testament to his leadership. So we just wanna honor him. It was his birthday this past week. And then also it's Pastoral Appreciation Month. So if he ain't feeling the love this month, I don't know what month he's gonna fill it in. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you'll turn your attention to the screen for this week's news. Good morning and welcome to Vibrant. We're honored that you've decided to worship with us today. This upcoming Sunday, October 30th, from 5 to 8 p.m., we'll be hosting Trunk or Treat right here at the church. Bring your whole family, it's gonna be a blast. We'll have games, prizes, of course candy. And this year, if you are hosting a vehicle, you have the chance to win one of three cash prizes. If you'd like to register your vehicle, you can go to the Church Center app and sign up today. Also happening next Sunday, we'll be having baby dedications. If you'd like to have your child dedicated to the Lord, surrounded by your church family, you can sign up today on the Church Center app. Did you know that our pastor has a pastor? <laughs> pastor Nathan Keating is one of the overseers here at Vibrant Church. And next weekend, we get the honor and the privilege of getting to host him here in our house. You don't wanna miss it. We'll see you then, and I hope you enjoy the rest of service. 
Vibrant family, let me hear from you. Are you excited to be in the house? I love it. I love it. I'm so glad that you are here today. That's my lovely wife, Carmen. Y'all love Carmen? <laughs> she pretty. Amen. Um, my name is Michael. My wife, Carmen, and I, we have the tremendous honor and privilege of serving this church as lead pastors. And we're so honored that you chose to be in the house today. Um, can we give it up like crazy for all of our first time guests? Let's do it. Come on. As always, I want to look directly into the camera and I want to welcome our online family in. No matter where you're watching from, how you're watching, thank you so much for making a vibrant part of your Sunday. Let's welcome our online family in. Let's do it. I love it. We're in a great season as a church. And I got to tell you, I'm walking into today, today is a very unique day. If you are a guest, I, I want to tell you something walking into this, or maybe you've just been kind of checking out Vibrant and, and uh, you don't, maybe you don't know what today is. Today is our Rooted Commitment Sunday. And I want to tell you, and there will be some things that we're going to do in this service that maybe if you're a guest today, um, we're not putting uh, pressure on you to be a part of to this, uh, this part of uh, the service today. Um, and so essentially for some of this, uh, if you don't know what we're doing, uh, obviously you can tell, look around, our church is growing tremendously, uh, which is amazing and we're thankful for that. But you know, three years ago, the Lord allowed us to plant our church Plant this church in half of this space. Uh, literally, the wall to the worship center was between those two poles that way. And uh, less than a year ago, we expanded into this space. And uh, we have launched a second service, and we're anticipating launching a third and even a fourth in the future. But at, eventually, at some point, um, we want to become rooted into our community where we own a building and land where we can make a larger uh, larger disc difference and, and just make it on a larger scale. And so that being said, we started a brand new campaign to, uh, it's called Rooted. Everybody say Rooted. Rooted. Where uh, today is the Commitment Sunday where we are going to, we're committing towards the Rooted campaign where our goal is to raise money towards buying land or uh, the purchase of a building that we can retrofit to be the next permanent campus of Vibrant Church. And so that way we can make a difference on a larger scale. But uh, something that's very important to us is that we are not, uh, we don't believe in emotional giving, okay? That is not biblical. Uh, emotional giving is not healthy giving, and so it's not healthy generosity. And so we told you about this vision in September uh, on our birthday, and we gave, we wanted to give you an opportunity to pray about it, because what we want you to do is take it to God and say, Lord, how am I? supposed to be involved in this. And then today is our commitment Sunday. And so what I hope you've done is you've gone to the Lord and asked him, if you call Vibrant Home, if this place feeds you, if this place impacts your life, what I ask that you would have done is gone to the Lord and say, how can I, how am I supposed to be involved with that? So that being said, uh, when you came in, you were given a uh, a commitment card. If you were, were not given one of those, if you can just raise your hand and our ushers are around and they can give you one. Um, if you don't have one, yeah, we can make sure that you get one. And so what this is, is if you call Vibrant Home, if this is a place that feeds your family, feeds you spiritually, what we want you to do is at the end of service today, uh, we'll have a moment where I'll, I'll let you know what's going to happen at the end before we get there. We're going to, if you can fill this out at some point during the message today, we'll bring them to the altar uh, with our seed offering, we're going to place them face down, and we're going to pray that the Lord would bless the offering, bless uh, the the commitment, both in His house and in your house. Uh, and we're all making commitments here to be a part of this. And so, that being said, um, I want to tell you if you are a guest or if you're just checking out of you know the church, if you're not sure Vibrant is your home yet, I want you to know that we love you, and you are certainly. Uh, welcome here and welcome to be a part, but there's absolutely no pressure for you to do so. Um, so today it marks that step in the life of Vibrant Church. And so uh, one day I think we'll look back uh, on this day when all of this, and we'll look at how this began, right? We'll look at it and we'll think, man, how did we get from here to there? How did we do that? I mean, I had one of those moments recently 
preparing for our birthday service and, and in launch season, when we had everybody at our house and we were casting vision uh, that we were gonna be in a cafetorium uh, at Knox Junior High. We were gonna be in a cafetorium and what that would look like. I've, we even had digital mock-ups made up of a cafetorium. If you've ever seen that before, it just smells like tater tots. And just, you can just smell it through the screen, right? Um, but I, I wish I could find, I couldn't find it this week. I wanted to show it to you. But then to launch in the space that we were able to and to do what the Lord has allowed us to do, it's amazing. Um, but I look back and I think, well, how did we get here? The only way that we got here was simply by leaning into God's plan, God's will, and obeying God's voice. And that is the message of this season. I want to see every one of your families, every one of you rooted in Jesus. Now, this is not just financial. I'm talking about finances is just a part of it, but I'm talking about being rooted in Jesus and his church. You know, I've, I've seen people, I've heard people say, well, I love Jesus. I've got a great relationship with Jesus, but I just can't stand the church, right? Guys, that's not biblical. It's, it's just not. You can't love Jesus and hate his body. You know, it's just like the, the body of Christ is something we're supposed to be a part of. And I want the challenge is I want to see every one of us rooted in the, the body, the foundation of Christ here. Because here's the, here's, here's the deal. God saved my soul, but the church saved my life, Right? God saved my soul from eternity in hell, but the church saved my life and changed the direction of where I was going. You can only imagine where, if I didn't have the church in my life and only, um, you know, this, a relationship with Jesus outside the church, that it would have affected the direction of my life, right? God saved my soul, but the church saved my life. Unashamedly, I can tell you that I believe every person should be rooted in a life-giving, healthy, spirit-filled church. Every person should be. Like, I, like, even if I wasn't a pastor, I would say that. Even before I was a pastor, I would say, even after I'm not a pastor anymore, when y'all are wheeling me around in a wheelchair, and I'm just that old guy, like, okay, old man, you know, like, I, like yeah, I'm still gonna say it. Like, I believe every person should be rooted in a life-giving, spirit-filled church. We all need to be rooted in Jesus, and the byproduct of that is being rooted in his church. Let me set it up like this today. Um, how many of you have a green thumb? How many of y'all are my green thumb people, right? All right? Like you, what I mean by that is you can keep uh, plants and things that you plant alive at your house. That didn't mean that you literally have a green thumb. Like nobody's got leprosy here, right? No, it's just, <laughs> that's not the deal. Like green thumb people, where you at? Where you at? Anybody? Okay, there it is. You can keep things alive. That is wonderful for you. Um, you can plant things and they actually live. I can tell you that is not the experience at the Scobie house. That is not it. In fact, since we have bought our home, we have less plants at it now than when we bought it um, that actually are alive. And the ones that are alive, we don't have to do very much for. So it's great. They're just very low maintenance. They are wonderful. In fact, uh, last spring, I was sitting in my recliner reading in the afternoon, and all of a sudden it became really quiet in my home. Now, if you're a parent of children, you understand that this is a major problem, right? If it becomes quiet, there's an issue, you should check on that, okay? And so, but I thought, you know what, Carmen's home. She's probably got it. I'll let her figure it out, okay? I'm, so I just sit in my recliner, and I keep reading, and I'm doing my thing, right? I just figured Carmen had it figured out. Well, later, I finished my reading time, and I put my book on my table, and I... And I Look at my, my phone, and it's 8 o'clock at night, and that's bedtime for our children. And I thought, what is happening? I don't hear anything. Like, it's, it's bedtime. Like, it's time for them to go to bed. So I, I get up from the chair, and I start calling. Hey, Carmen, Carmen, where you at? Ethan, Miles, where you, where you at? I don't hear anything, y'all. There's no voices coming in my house. And I'm like, what is happening? I start calling out a little louder. Carmen, hey. I start like saying, I'll give the kids candy to see if they're hiding. They'll actually come out. You're like, I got smarties. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'll, do, I'll do anything. Come out, right? Yeah, you know, for a second, I got a little nervous. I thought I missed the rapture. I thought, oh God, like, hey, Jesus, you left one. I'm right here. Let me on the bus. You know what I'm saying? Right? I, thought, I thought I was in trouble. And, uh, but then I hear, I hear laughing outside. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So I got in the front yard. And uh, sure enough, my beautiful wife is outside with all the kids. But what you have to understand about Carmen Scobie is that she's like the private investigator in our neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like she's a PI. We don't have neighborhood watch. We have Carmen watch. You know what I'm saying? She keeps everybody safe. And uh, so she saw that a landscaping company uh, was switching out flowers. 
that the HOA had put in. And so she had bag, they had bagged up like 20 bags of those bad boys, and they're just sitting up on the side of the road, and, and they're just sitting in trash bags like they're going to the trash. I come outside. There is dirt everywhere. Everybody's got dirt on them. And, and she's got some of them trash bags in my yard. And I said, Carmen, what are you doing? She said, well, I saw they were throwing those plants away. I just figured I'd like to plant them. I said, babe, that's stealing. You can't do that. She said, oh, no, they were throwing them in the trash. That's not stealing. I can just see the, the, the news headline right now. Local pastor steals from HOA. If you see it, it's true. Like, we did it. I mean, you, you, I mean we're not denying. I mean, Carmen is there. She's got all the tools. Ethan's over there trying on different pairs of work gloves. And Miles is just eating mulch like it's chocolate. Just, um, um, Dad, it's chocolate. No, it's bark, son. Don't eat that poop bark for days is gross like they're planting all these things and and they're like oh it's gonna look so beautiful in our yard you know it's gonna look awesome I'm like oh, okay cool sounds good can I tell you that those flowers were dead d-e-d dead before the next morning before we rose before Jesus brought us our new mercies for the day everyone in flowers was dead <laughs> everyone in flowers was dead every one of them okay now they're just weeds going sitting in my flower bed for me to pick up at some point in my life, um, but not today. <laughs> uh, you know, the expectation of anybody that has planted a garden, a tree, or flowers is that once they become established and take root, they will grow and produce the desired outcome unless they live on the Scobie property, okay, right? It would be crazy to work the soil, plant a garden full of seeds, and little plants, and then leave the garden without any expectation of a harvest. Just leave it. Just walk away from it. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. See, Jesus gave us new birth, and he gave us a new life. And I think it's reasonable that he expects us to grow in him, and to mature in him, and to multiply for him. He's not walking away from you after faith is planted in you. We say it often around here, but we mean it is that Jesus didn't just save you from something. He saved you to something, right? He saved you to something. That's something very important. If Jesus wasn't saving you to something, he would have just zapped your hide when you gave your life to him and he would have took you to heaven and been like, all right, that's it. Well, we know they gave their life to Jesus. Their shorts are right there. Pick up another one. You know what I'm saying? That's not how it works though, right? You give your life to Jesus and you grow in him. I wanna help you build your faith today in a very real and tangible way. This is for the new believer, the growing Christian, the mature believer, uh, the veteran of the faith today. I, I wanna tell you this, is a rooted life is an unshakable life. A rooted life is an unshakable life. We, being in Houston, we know all about strong storms and hurricanes, right? Um, how, we, we've all been through Harvey. We've been through all the storms. We could just name them down the line. Praise God we didn't have one here this year. But we all understand what it means. I mean, it blows my mind that we will see a house floating down a road, but the tree will still be there. All right, what? Trees that will stand and a house is floating down the road. How are they standing strong? They're rooted. Stronger roots, more strength. I'm going to be particularly in one scripture today, uh, or, or two verses that you've probably read before, but I hope to break it down in a way that's tangible and practical for you. It's, it's uh, Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7. Uh, we're going to read it like this. Verse 6, and now just as you accepted Christ as your Lord, okay, hopefully all of you have made that step. If you have not made that step uh, today, we will give you the opportunity to do that later in, in the service. But if you've given your life to Jesus, accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, what do you got to do? You must continue to follow him. You're going to notice when we break down context, there's going to be a lot of the, the, the same words used over and over here. And so verse 7, let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness overflow with thankfulness. The first part of the scripture, uh, so it, it talks about you were saved, you, you gave your life to Jesus, you must continue to grow in him. But how? How? How do I continue to grow in Christ? 
whether I've been a believer for 10 years or this is my first time to, I gave my life to Jesus last week. This is my first week as a believer. Like I, this is my first, this is how, this is how. I'm gonna give you the how. Number one, let your roots grow down into him. In this verse, Paul gives us three characteristics of what the rooted life with Jesus will look like. Actually, four towards the end. But this rooted appears in the tense of the Greek expressing the continuing results of an action completed in the past. It's continuing, just like Jesus said. If you've given your, you've, you, you, you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to grow. The first thing he said in how is to continue, the continuing result is you bringing your roots down low. In other words, when you come into faith, you are planted. You are planted in the ground, but we must have deep growing roots in good soil in order for it to grow. Deep growing roots, uh, g- growing roots in order to, for it to grow. You become rooted when there is connection. You become rooted when there is connection. That's why we preach about this so much. If this is going to be your church home, if this is going to be your home church, I just got to tell you, for you to be rooted in Jesus, I'm telling you, you need to go through next and dive in and be rooted to the local church. Get acclimated to the culture of vibrant. Jump on a team and start doing life with other people. A surefire way to be rooted in Christ is to be connected to his people. Man, that wasn't a very loud amen. Amen. A surefire way, I'm gonna say it again just in case y'all didn't get it. A surefire way for you to be rooted in Christ is to be connected with his people. His people, it matters. It matters. In fact, there's a couple um, here, there in this service, Matt and Abby. Y'all love Matt and Abby? Come on. Matt and Abby moved here. They got a part, they were part of Vibrant four or five months ago, right? Something like that. Three months ago. Jeez, three months ago. And so uh, they decided that Vibrant was going to be their home church. They went through next. They decided to jump on a team and uh, they decided to serve in the kids' team. And so jumped right in serving the kids' team and uh, they've expanded their role in doing different things. Abby's doing, uh, you know, PCO scheduling and all the things. Well, they, uh, they approached Candace, our kids' director, and said, hey, well, you know, is there something that I can do? Like, can I help you with something? Well, if you don't know this, and many of y'all don't, I'm going to tell you a little secret about our campus. There's a second story of our campus. There's an upstairs in our campus, and it's over our kids' wing, and it's a big storage area. Okay? It's like 3,000 square feet of storage. Uh, it's like everybody's got a junk drawer, and that's ours. You know what I'm saying? Like all of our things that we don't use consistently, all, you know, 11 Christmas trees and all the things, they're up there, right? And so they're upstairs, and Candace was like, you could really help us and, and maybe like organize the kids' stuff that's upstairs. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll do that. They went up there and organized the whole storage deal upstairs, right? That's awesome. That's awesome, right? That's not where I'm going. Recently, they were asked how, like, what made you connect to Vibrant so quickly? Like how, why are you a part of this? And, and they said, I've never connected to a group of people so quickly in all my life. And it feeds me spiritually. It feeds me spiritually. Your connection to other people, people in Christ, it feeds your connection to Christ. That is the way, one way for you to get rooted. That's why we preach about life groups so much. Life groups will change your life. Freedom, people, freedom, where you at? Let me tell you, a freedom group will change your spiritual walk forever. It will literally change rejuvenate you. It will change you. I, I've seen people even go through freedom. It is not a recovery deal. It's not like, hey, you know, I'm an, I, I need help with addiction. I need to go to freedom. That's part of it. It's not, that's not it, okay? But I've seen people even go through freedom and then go through it again because they just want to continue rolling it, right? That's, freedom is incredible. It's incredible. The reason why we preach this so much is this. The growth we see above the ground depends on the connection that is happening below the ground, The connection that is happening below the ground. Christian, let me tell you, this faith is bigger than Sunday morning faith. Your faith must go on daily. Well, Pastor Michael, you sure say that a lot. Well, I I need y'all to sure hear it a lot because I'm going to keep saying it until we get it. Because we need Jesus every day. We need to lean into Jesus every day. We need to live in freedom every day, every day, every day. We need it every day. 
I think about this imagery that Paul was using here, and it's so powerful. We can see this initial activity of growth is concealed by the, from the view of others. It's separated from the view. Just as the roots of the tree are hidden below the ground, your roots of faith are hidden deep in Christ. There will be times that you don't feel like you're growing because you're not seeing the fruit. Keep digging roots. Keep growing roots. The fruit is not what you need to look for. The root is what you need to look for, right? The health of the fruit is found in the root. If you want good fruit in your life, if you want a good marriage, if you want a good job, you want to, get, you want to find fulfillment in your world, you need to check your roots. Where are your roots at? That's going to show you your fruit. Well, Pastor Michael, I just can't figure out why I'm not. I'm telling you, check your roots. Your growth in Jesus is not for everybody else to see. You don't have to rely on somebody else to tell you that you're growing in Christ. You don't. Uh, church, I got to tell you today as your pastor, I'm not growing in Christ preaching to you today. I'm not. I'm preaching out of the overflow of my roots that are dug down deep. I'm preaching out of the overflow because if I wasn't rooted in Jesus, the fruit of the preaching would be dead. It would be dead. Your growth doesn't happen in your life when you had that hard conversation with somebody that you need to have one with. That's not when your growth happens. Your growth happens when you talk to God about that hard conversation before you get there. That's where your growth happens. All right? Your growth doesn't happen when you get a promotion at your job. I know you think that promotion comes through and that pay raise and like, oh man, God expanded, expanded my territory. No, your, your growth happens when you lean into God that he made you and gave you the provision of gifts and you root those gifts in him, which creates a promotion, right? The growth isn't when the fruit sprouts, it's when the root is grown. That's the beginning of the fruit. See, Jesus is good soil for you to plant your life in. He is soil that you can trust. This reminds me of the words of Jeremiah who wrote this in one of the most difficult times of his life, Jeremiah 17 and 7, he said, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. I know many of you in this house are going through difficult times. You're going through uncertain times. You're going through times where you just don't know what is ahead. I'm telling you, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, who, build, to, to, who digs those roots down deep, trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. What happens is when we, we, we dig down our roots deep into Christ, it's just like the imagery that the word is giving us. And I love the imagery here that we're, we're digging our roots next to a river. That river is the, it, it's God himself. It is the Holy Spirit inside of us. So when trouble comes, when the drought comes, I don't have to worry because I'm right next to the river. I'm right next to the source. I'm connected to the source. So it might be a little hot on top, but I'm telling you my roots are connected to the one that's my source. And I don't have to worry because the river is running. I've, I've planted myself in good soil. He's someone you can trust. He's someone you can trust. Number two, let your lives be built on him. So we have the roots and then we have let your lives be built on him. Paul mixes metaphors here and I really I love that, that difference. Moving from a plant being rooted in the ground to a building being constructed in Christ. It's two different metaphors in one sentence. The root of the plant's foundation perhaps inspired the merging of the two images. Being built up in him implies all of us are still under construction because he's still working on me, all right? There's no getting there until you get to heaven, right? You should be growing until the day that you pass. Grow. Jesus is still working on us. I think there's something powerful about being built on Jesus, 
built on Jesus. You know, um, those of you that know me very well, you know that I'm a beach person. Um, and I, typically there's beach people and then there's mountain people and those people, they marry each other, right? And so I'm the beach person, so I'll let you figure it out. Um, <laughs> I love to go to the beach and, and that's kind of my vacation thing. And I had somebody last time I talked about this, they hit me up. They're like, Pastor Michael, if you love the beach so much, why don't you just like start a campus at the beach? You could just plant a vibrant campus at the beach. And I was like, I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, that'd be kind of interesting. They're like, you could, have a, you could have a beach house, you know, live at the beach all the time. I was like, I started thinking, I was like, man, that sounds really great. Except for that's literally what Jesus told us not to do is build anything on sand. <laughs> that's literally what he told us not to do. You know what I'm saying? Like the exact words. I think too many people build their lives on the sand of the world and then end up surprised when it was washed into the sea. I built my life on, on money. I built my life on my career. I built my life on this person. I built my life on this sports team. I built my life on all these things. And I get surprised when it, it, when it washes into the sea because you built it on sand. See, this world is sinking sand. We can't build anything permanent on sand. I know you, your kids think those sand castles they made this summer are going to be there next summer when you get there. But I got bad news, Bubba. They're not going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, we cannot build our life on this world. We cannot build our morals on this world. We cannot build our schedules on this world. We cannot build our finances on this world. We cannot build our spirituality on this world because there is only one thing that we can build our life on. That's Jesus. I wish somebody would preach with me and wake up today. I don't know how much voice I got left. I sang a little, I preached a little, I sang a little again, and now I'm preaching. I'm not ready for it. I, I just, I, y'all got, you're going to get all the preach I got. Is that all right today? We got to build our life on Jesus. What does that mean? It means your priorities matter. Jesus cares about the details of your life. He cares about it. He cares about your lifestyle. He cares about your calendar. Yes, Jesus cares about your iCal. He cares about it. Now, that doesn't mean that Jesus wants you to cancel everything that you have on your iCal and do a 24-hour prayer meeting every day at your home. Uh, and that's not what it, that means. And, and if you are, that, praise God, you're probably watching online right now. But praise God for your prayer meeting. But uh, here's what it does mean. If your schedule is too busy to fit your quiet time in, you will always be full, but not fulfilled. You'll always be busy, but not about the right business. If your life is keeps being focused on the next thing that pleases your heart, don't be surprised when you're constantly shifted into anxiety because you can't trust your heart. We're living in a world full of TikTok influencers that are are living a dream because of their anxiety because they just won't give their life to Jesus. They won't build their life on something that matters and they can't figure out why they're wishy-washy and why things are moving. And it's because you have to root yourself in something that won't move. I build my life on Jesus because when the storm moves, he doesn't. When the wind blows and everything's a moving target, Jesus is stable. He builds, our, we, we, he builds our lives on something that has strengthened generations, generations. It's beyond me. It's beyond you. It's beyond your kids. It's beyond your grandkids. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Check this out having been built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into the holy temple and the Lord in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. I love, it says that Christ is the chief cornerstone. In other words, everything was built around that. You know, in this building, when we built this building, they told me how much it was going to be to move them bathrooms. And I was like, we're not going to move them bathrooms. We're going to move everything around around them bathrooms because we're not going to move them. You know what I'm saying? The potty's just going to stay right there. You know what I'm saying? 
I think so many people build their lives around everything else and they let Jesus be a fixture in their household. And they wonder why they don't experience the victory they would if it is if he was the chief cornerstone. The question is, what are you building your home around? What are you building your life around? Are you building your life around your own desires and wants? Are you building your life around your dream or his dream for your life? It matters. It matters. He's the chief cornerstone. Number three, then your faith will grow strong in the truth. I love this so much. Your faith will grow strong in the truth. That word strong refers to being continually flourishing. Continually flourishing. You see the continuing pattern all the way throughout this. After you give your life to Jesus, you must continue to grow by continuing to root yourself. Continually flourishing and becoming more solidified in the faith. When you plant something in good soil, the roots will grow down deep and eventually it grows into something strong. But when they plant the, when they plant trees, they put poles around the trees to hold them up. You got some of those, right? You got it, trees and they put the poles that are holding the tree up. Why? Because the roots are not strong enough to hold the tree if there was strong wind. And we don't want the tree falling down, so we're going to put these poles that are going to stabilize the tree until the roots grow down far enough. They don't, they don't, in taking these poles away, they don't test how tall the tree is. They test how strong the roots are. So they test how strong these roots are and they take the poles away. Why? The strength of the tree comes from the roots. I know you're thinking, Pastor Michael, that don't matter a hill of beans to me. Let me tell you, let me tell you. The strength of your life will not come from the things of the outside that people see. The strength of your life is not your looks. It is not your money. It is not the things you own. It is not your job. It is not your career. The strength of your life, that is all, those are all byproducts. The strength of your life comes from where your roots are grown into. Faith will grow strong in the truth. Everybody say the truth. Notice I didn't say a truth. I said the truth. Because in a world where relative truth and ideal truth and your truth, let me just remind you that truth doesn't change. Truth is Jesus and he's the only way. The only way to fulfillment is repentance and giving your life to Jesus and living his will for your life because truth cannot be created. It only can be discovered because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and he's the only way. Where we get it twisted is when we think, well, I've got my truth. Here's the deal, you don't have a truth. You have an opinion, and the, the, the fact is whether your opinion lines up with his truth. That's going to determine your level of fulfillment. You want more fulfillment? Align with his truth. You want to have less fulfillment? Walk away from his truth. Ask the world. Ask how it's going for him. Right? That's not on my notes. I'm just giving you all free preaching right now. All right? You, want, you, want, you got this level of fulfillment in your world. You want, that, you want to lay your head on the pillow at night, every night, every night, and go, I am, I am happy with my life. I am fulfilled. I am full of joy. How did I get here, God? It's because you aligned your life with his will for your world, with his truth for your world. I'm telling you, there is no our truth. There was only his truth. He is the truth. Let me move on to number four here. Move on. Number four, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Overflow. Everybody say overflow. Overflow. So we have, we've got roots being, grow your roots deep. Got build your life. And then you have this truth growing in truth, you're sprouting, but now you've sprouted fruit that doesn't stop there. Here's the deal, so many Christians stop right there and they go, I'm growing fruit, this is great. My fruit is for me, it's awesome. I love the fruit that I grow. I'm sure gardeners that actually grow things feel that way. I don't know how that feels, but you know what I'm saying? Like I I grew something, I ate it, I have no clue, right? But you grow something and you think it's all for you. Wait a minute. It doesn't stop there. I root myself deep in Christ. I build my life on him. 
I grow fruit from his truth, which is inside of me. But then the last step inside of this is that we are overflowing with thankfulness. I believe Christians ought to be the most thankful people in the world. I believe Christians ought to be the most joy-filled people in the world. Let me read this whole scripture for you to give you the context. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. There is a continuance there. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow in, in, in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with faithfulness. That phrase overflow with thankfulness means the result of God's action in the lives of Christians. Because of all Jesus did for us, I am eternally thankful. Because what he did for me. Because you can, you can hear me sing a song, what he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor to the son. You can hear me sing that, but until you know where I came from, you don't know what he's done in my life. Being rooted up, built up, established, it should create thanksgiving in us. The root system of a plant, when it's healthy and functioning, what happens is it, it's absorbing and distributing nutrients as it should. Luxuriant green foliage and leaves will be present. Thankfulness are the leaves of your life. That which inwardly which is inwardly healthy, will always demonstrate an outward sign of health. Uh, church, I, I can tell you those who bubble up with gratitude for what God has done in their life, they're not easily preyed on by anxiety and doubt. Why? They have no need or desire to find fulfillment in other places. Thanksgiving and gratitude are the mark of a healthy spiritual life. A spiritual life. Show me someone who is thankful and I'll show you someone who is leaning into God's heart. You will overflow with thankfulness. There is thankfulness hidden inside of all of us. But the question is, are you thankful? Are you walking into your job with thankfulness? You can almost reverse engineer this a little bit and take... There's a, every one of us have a thankful tank or a thankful meter. I feel like a good litmus test of our spiritual health today might would be to spend some time in introspection and wondering about where's our thankfulness meter at? Are we thankful or are we bitter? Well, Pastor Michael, I'm not in a great season. You can still be thankful in a great season. In fact, I think the people that end up on the road to blessing are the people that are thankful in the rough seasons. Can I tell you what thankfulness looks like? I didn't say this first service. I'm, I'm just going off script today. Second service, y'all getting the good stuff. I might get a little emotional with this, but um, there was a man who taught me in college, my dean of music, great man and his wife. He taught me piano and she taught me vocal. And, um, they pushed on me and they challenged me to be, to better myself and to grow. And we went from there and went different ways, but I stayed connected with them. And um, they're just marvelous people. Went on to help plant one of the, the largest church plants in the history of church planting. Just incredible people. They were on the team for years of that church. A few years ago, she was diagnosed with cancer. Diagnosed with cancer and, and she fought for years, treatments for years and years and years. And finally, about a month ago, they told her, they said, there's nothing more that we can do. All we can do is treat you to hospice and home hospice. They brought her home for hospice. and I've never been so challenged than I was watching my, my former dean of music, I, I wanna respect them, their privacy, so I won't say their name. But watching him take care of his kids and his wife and still every time say, God, I thank you for this life you've given us. I thank you for my family. I thank you for what you've allowed us to be a part of. Can I tell you, 
that yesterday she passed away. Yesterday afternoon. And the first thing he did was he made a post and it was impactful. He said, it's not okay, but God is still good. That's the sign of health. When you can face trouble, when you can face issues, we can have it, like stuff everywhere. And you can say, it's not okay right now. But I am still thankful that God has been good. Would you stand with me across the room today? Thankfulness. Do you know what makes a tumbleweed so susceptible to wind? Tumbleweeds only put down one singular root into the ground. And that root is very shallow. So tumbleweeds are easily uprooted when the wind blows. The wind blows and that root is broken and, and soon the tumbleweed is blowing wherever the wind pushes it without any sense of direction or stability. Contrast the tumbleweed with the tree, like the sequoia, that puts down lots of roots and the roots go deep, even in the midst of strong winds, even in the midst of storms, even in the midst of issues. Sequoias stand firm because their root structure is strong and deep. The challenging question I have for you today, is your spiritual life more like a tumbleweed or a sequoia? A tumbleweed or a sequoia. If you only have one or two roots in your spiritual life and these roots don't go very deep, you stand the risk of constantly being uprooted when the breeze of business and routine come in and blow the winds of, of suffering and, and tragedy take hold in your world. But when we get rooted in Christ, when we are built in his soil, when we're built on him and on his truth, on his foundation, it produces fruit in and through us. For some of you, maybe that's you today, and you're like, man, I, you're new to this. And you're like, I, I just, I'm here today because I felt like I wanted to, I, I, there was something more out there for me. And I'm telling you, there is. And that something is Jesus. The only way that you can get there is simply by giving your life to him. You want to stop finding fulfillment in the world and find, find some good soil to root yourself in? It's only going to happen in Jesus. It's only going to happen in Jesus. And the great news for you is that salvation that I was talking about earlier, that salvation from our sin is attainable today, not, be, not from anything that you would do, but because of a sacrifice that Jesus made for you. He sacrificed on a cross, died on a cross, rose three days later so you could have salvation, but also freedom for your tomorrow. The great news is Romans 10 says that all that call on the name of the Lord will be saved. You call, you call on the name of the Lord, meaning you give your life to him. You surrender to his will and his way. You root yourself deep in Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe that's you. Maybe you need to, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time, or maybe you want to recommit your heart to him. You're like, God, I, I need to go back all in. This is a fresh start for me. God, I, I, need, I, I need to go all in. I need to get rooted in Christ. I want a victorious life in Christ. I want vibrant life in Jesus. If that's you today, nobody's looking around. If you could just lift up, just slip up, slip up your hand across this room today. If that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus. That's beautiful. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see you, sir. That's beautiful. Come on, it's beautiful. The great news here is that it simply begins with you just praying a prayer repenting of your sin from yesterday and giving your life to him today. We're gonna pray this prayer together as a church. Church, would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've tried to do life my own way, but today I repent. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my desires. You died on a cross and rose three days later for my salvation and my freedom. So I give my life to you. I put my hope in you. I put my trust in you. It is your will and your way. In Jesus' name, 
Amen, amen. Can we celebrate five people just gave their lives to Jesus right here?